wondering what that's all about. But uh, you know, I stand on the, the shoulders of giants, uh, mainly my family. My great-grandfather was a farmer. And my grandfather was also a farmer. Not by choice, it's just so that the farm didn't make enough money. And my grandfather had to go back to the farm. And eventually, he became a railroad engineer. But he vowed one day to make his son an engineer. He sent him to college. And my dad became an engineer and came to the United States. In this country, we pride ourselves with you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But what is that all about? It comes back to the family. I don't know about you guys, but most of us in this room are going to have to work. Either you have a trust fund, or you work, or you're homeless. How do we work? Well, in the past, we're wanderers. And you know, all those who wander are not lost. I wandered for a long time. Many different jobs, uh, and because I was mostly self-employed, I traveled a bit. But back in the day, we were hunters. And we used to go kill some food, bring it back, cook it before it got bad, and as often as we needed it. It was convenient. And we also gathered. You know, we made some baskets, got some berries, some nuts. Uh, I like blackberries, and I like walnuts. But eventually, we started to grow in population and became farmers. What did the farm give us? The farm gave us a homestead. It gave us a home where we could raise our families, and eventually those farms turned into villages. I'm here to talk about the internet, so we're going to fast forward a few millennia. Let's talk about the American public. From the Declaration to the Constitution, the founding fathers, many of whom were farmers, were discussing how to organize our society. Uh, one such person, uh, my, one of my favorites actually, Thomas Jefferson was a big fan of the farmer, the yeoman farmer. And in the Jeffersonian Republic, his idea was that societies based on an agricultural economy would be able to support themselves and not be affected by the vicissitudes of business and the seasons of change of supply and demand. And eventually, as we can see, we have the modern republic. Uh, the modern republic has given us many things. And some of what Jefferson talked about has come true. We do have a fa family uh, structure that's not as strong. The local communes and the regional communes don't really, uh, aren't really conducive to a strong family. There are men and women who travel Sunday through Thursday just to make sure that there are two cars in the garage and their kids have food on the table. Is that really what we want? out of the modern world? Well, how can the internet help? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the digital farmland. I've been a digital farmer for the last 20, uh, not 20 years, 12 years, excuse me, I'm not that old. In the beginning, it was information technology. Web hosters, web designers, web developers. Later on, knowledge workers caught wind. There were project managers, customer service representatives. And <coughs> lately, service providers, day laborers, not really, but cleaners, movers, landscapers, along Craigslist, providing services directly to their local community. But that's not even the tip of the iceberg. There are rock star digital farmers out there. One of my favorites is 37 Signal. 37 Signal is a company consisted of 26 people across two continents, over eight cities. And they serve millions, millions of small businesses. And they make millions. How can 26 people do that? Another one of my favorites, MoviePad. It's a little stand you put on your iPad or your iPhone, and it just makes watching movies a little bit easier. This design group in Manchester, in the United Kingdom, spun off as a company. Those four people now ship these products to 75 countries. How is that possible? 
Grok it. Just recently found out about it. It is an initi initiative which aims to get students addicted to study at the 8th to 12th grade level, at the graduate level for GMATs and LSATs. They start off with 10 people. And they're impacting th hundreds of thousands of students around the country. But Amanda Hockey is by far the winner here. She's 26 years old. She sells 100,000 books a month. Yeah, they're about a dollar, three dollars. But if you do the math, she's making millions of dollars a year because she chose to use the internet to provide her service to humanity. But that's not it. You don't have to be a creative person. You can just be skilled at something, be an expert at something, and provide that. So this is a picture I took from uh, Odesk.com, which is a virtual agency. I don't know how many uh, workers they have on there, but total. But that's the number of hours worked since the inception in 2004 to 2011. The graph, as you see, is exponential, and it's growing. There are 50,000 workers earning about $20 an hour in the United States. There are 27,000 workers in India earning about $14 an hour. And for obvious reasons, China is misrepresented. They have a firewall. They can't work on the internet like we all can. This is the picture of the economy. $270 million earned on Odesk. Uh, 450 postings an hour, and the average job size is about $5,000. Not too shabby for people that are working from home. Another agency site is called Elance. And I'm sorry the image isn't clear, but there are 25,000 business writers, there are 6,000 iPhone developers, and 30,000 Photoshop designers. These are people like you and me that decide, hey, I have some free time on my hands. Maybe I can get some money for it. But eventually, this becomes a career for some, especially in other countries. The internet gives everybody the ability to decide. Do you want to be a local servant to your community? Do you want to create or produce locally and serve locally? You can do that. Or do you want to be a global leader? Do you want to create globally, work with people across the world, and then give back to the world, like 37 signals? And there's a new term coming about. It's called global. It takes a little used to, to pronounce this, but global means how can we merge global and local together? How are we part of this greater community? How can we produce locally, serve globally, produce globally, and serve locally? How are you going to be a part of this digital economy? Are you going to be a global leader, a local leader, or a global leader? There's a quote that Gandhi said, he said, the best way to find oneself is through the service to other people. Well, you have a choice. You can work for a very large company, or you could work for yourself. You could work for your friends. Get five people together, start a company. In February, 200,000 jobs were created by companies with 50 employees or less. 40,000, only 40,000 jobs were created by large companies. Uh, the latest research by Kaufman Foundation says that even though job creation has slowed down, it's the small companies that continue to be the leaders in creating jobs. How are you going to feed your family? How are you going to be of service to yourself, to your family, to your God, and your country? Thank you very much.